All right, we are recording here. We're coming up on Black Friday. This is a this is actually a very exciting Zoom call here. And reason being, I'm coming to you live from guess where? <laughs> on board the yacht. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lucky you. Limbo land. It's the name in Limbo land. Show me some pictures. So I am all set up now to broadcast live from the boat. So very exciting. <clears throat> oh, very I get it. You finish with us at 12, 1230, and then you're going to go out for a little sea cruise before you come home for dinner. <laughs> Pretty good, much. Good plan. <laughs> no, actually, I got guys down uh, working on electronics, putting in some uh, some new stuff, moving stuff around, getting updated. So just doing a little work down here. Getting... Did they ever get the radio working? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Got all, everything, almost everything's working now. Now it's just a matter of convenience, putting switches here, switches there, stuff like that. And we're putting our uh, our night vision infrared camera, the same stuff that they put on the search and rescue boats. So that's getting installed too. So cool stuff. We are gearing up for next season. So by the time uh, the weather warms up, March rolls around, we will be doing lots of masterminds out here on the boat. So guys, get ready. <laughs> Good times ahead. But anyway, I wanted to open the call up. If anybody has any questions about what you should be doing for Black Friday, or if there's anything that you're stuck on, um, anything at all that's what the call is for whatever you need we'll throw it out there and take care of it for you so uh anybody want to get started here who's up who's up first hey john hey russ how's it going good how you doing buddy awesome <laughs> <laughs> so, so i guess you're not going to show us pictures of your boat we're just going to see you huh Oh, well, that's pictures. Hell, it's live. I can walk you through. <laughs> give, give us the 50 cent tour. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I've been up top working with the electronics guys. So down below, I don't have any of the lights on. So I'd have to go through and light it all up for you. Maybe we'll do that on the next call. All right. Sounds good. It should take me 10 minutes to walk through here and turn all the lights on. <laughs> um, I had a question about blog posting and article submission. Okay. So I understand about writing blog posts to your site and getting traffic to your site. And if you pay someone to create an article and you post it on your site, what's the, the ramifications of, of submitting that article or reposting that someplace else? How does that work? Is that okay. a duplicate penalty or what? No, no, I don't, you don't have to worry about that at all. Duplicate penalty is like, you know, a lot of people talked about penalties for a long time and they're not really penalties. It's Google is trying to not show the same thing twice, but what it's looking for is it's looking for it on the same domain. Like, let's say, let's say you took your article and you had the article was relevant to like six different silos on your site. So rather than putting the article on just one page and just linking all the silos to the one page, you replicated the article and you put it on six different pages of your site. But it was an identical copy. And uh, what Google is doing, they don't penalize you for that. They don't come in and say, oh, you know, Russ is trying to cheat us and let's just wipe out his site. That's not what they're doing. What they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out which is the master. They get that you might have different copies laying around. They just don't want to promote all of them. So they try and figure out which one is the master, which one's the most relevant, and that's the one that will get indexed. So a lot of guys found that they had five or six pages of the same content indexed and they, they thought, oh yeah, you know, we're gaming the system. And when Google figured it out, they figured out how to deal with that. 
those pages did get flushed and they called that a penalty, but that's not really, in my opinion, that's not a penalty. That's just Google trying to figure out what content should be listed. It makes total sense, right? It doesn't make sense for them to list six of the same page and show up all on their search result. So let's say, let's say that you had your piece of content, you wrote your article, you post it on your own blog. Now you have one page that to Google, they would rank that page, right? <clears throat> you could take that same content and you could go out to an article directory and you could post it there. And now you have a second piece of content that could rank even though it's the identical content. You can also, like a, a good place for them right now is in your Google My Business account. They allow you to post articles in there. Oh, do they? Then, yeah, yeah, you can post articles right in your Google My Business account. And the deal is they see it as a news feed. So it's good and it's bad. The good part is they show up almost instantly and they rank really well and they help you. The bad part is because they're seen as news, they fall off really quickly. And some people look at that as, oh, well, you know, I, put, I keep posting my content, Google keeps taking it away, they ban me, they don't like me. That's not true. It's, an, it's looked at as relevant news feed when you first post it, Google likes to feature things that are new. So it will get more priority the first day it's up. It will get slightly less the second day, slightly less the third day. And after a couple of weeks, it's probably just going to fall off and disappear. So at that point, would you then put it on your site or would you put it on your site and Google My Business at the same time? Yeah, same time. There's no reason not to put it on both at the same time. Okay. You can also put it, there's all kinds of different uh, directories out there. What happens is this is the kind of the strategy from way back was to use to blast it out on all the mar all the article directories. You know, there's hundreds of them out there. And the purpose for SEO, the purpose was link building. That's how we all used to build our links. We would create a piece of content, put the links in them, and then we would shovel it out onto a hundred sites. And now all of a sudden we have a hundred incoming links. That's, you know, that was the old school link building. Google's kind of, you know, put the, put the hammer down on that stuff. And again, they're not penalizing you for it. They're just not counting it in your favor like they used to. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to do because the more places where your content shows up, the more likely you are to have someone click through, visit your site and give you a good user experience. That is the new SEO. So in my opinion, you know, a lot of the guys that used to do article posting and, and you know, and blast them out to all the hard article directories, they stopped doing it because they, they didn't get the link juice anymore. But what they're not thinking about is they're not thinking about where did SEO go? SEO is all about user experience. The more people that visit your site from external places, the more Google is going to like it the more Google is going to be in, enticed to show you as relevant because that Google has like FOMO. <clears throat> Google has fear of missing out. If they see other people sending people to your site, they wanna get in on it. If you're just focused on Google and everything you're doing is Google, 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 Google's sending you all your traffic. They're going to look at that and they're going to go, yeah, why are we sending this guy 100% of his traffic? That's what their algorithm is looking for. They don't want to be the one to send you 100% of the traffic. So, so, so let me ask you this question. If you're saying I'm getting all my traffic from Google, say I want traffic from Bing, is there something different that you would do to get Bing traffic as opposed to Google traffic? Yeah, Bing... Bing is very similar to Google. Most people don't focus on Bing. If I were you, <clears throat> I would go over and create a Bing account, just like a Google Webmaster account. Bing has the same thing. Oh. I would create an account over there. I would create a business listing over there. 
I would connect it to your site, just like all the stuff that you do with Google, you can do with Bing. That's all optimization for Bing. Most people don't look at it. They overlook it. They're all, I mean, so many people are just, they cannot get Google off their mind. They're fixated with Google. <clears throat> and the truth is, the more fixated with Google you are, the worse off you're going to be. You need to get traffic from other sources so Google recognizes your site as relevant. So Bing, yeah, I would absolutely go in and create. I don't, I forget the name of it. It's not Webmaster Tools, but it's very similar. You can create the account. You can get a business listing. You can optimize it just like you can optimize a, a Google My Business page. They even have all, you know, all the maps, all the business hours, all that stuff. Oh. So I would go in, I would create that account, optimize it just like you do with Google and start ranking in, in Bing. Okay. You know, we also, I, I know you're familiar with SitePop. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, we're coming out with a version of SitePop that actually works to send signals to Bing. I've been testing it on my site. And I, I had the, uh, I've had the listing in Bing for several years now, but I never really did much. I never did really much outside of that. And I use site pop on it now to, I've been sending Bing signals for about two months now. And all of the keywords that I was not showing up for, I'm now showing up for. So site pop works on Bing. Bing is using the exact same artificial intelligence as Google is. So it's uh, and you have the site pop for Amazon and the site pop for Bing running on the same Android device or no? Yes, I believe that you can. I haven't I haven't tried the Amazon one yet. Chris has been working with the Amazon one and he didn't have any Amazon products, but he just took somebody's product that was on page five, just randomly selected a product on page five and he said, I'm gonna promote this guy. And he was able, I think he said it took him about three weeks. He pushed it to the top. I'll tell you what, I'll give you some sample products. <laughs> yeah, send, them, send them over. I'll have him swap them out. He might as so, well send, send signals for you. <laughs> yeah, because I've been, I've been trying the Amazon one, and I've been looking at my Amazon analytics, and I'm not seeing much improvement. So I, I don't know if it works or if I'm doing something wrong, but I'll send you the links, and maybe we could see if we can get more firepower on there. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll have him swap out whatever he's pointed at because he said it took him about three weeks, but huh. he said he pushed it from like page five up to up to the top. Okay. So. All right. My last question is the article submission. Um, is there one place that you would recommend to submit articles now? Uh, you know, I've I have been out of that piece of the puzzle for so long now that I don't even know what article directories are out there. Okay. I would go, you know, just go to Google and uh, just Google article directories and see what's out there. Another one too, this is, this is kind of something that a lot of people shifted to was the Q and A sites, like sites that offer uh, questions and answers. A lot of the authorities have been going in there and answering people's questions. And it does a couple of things for you. It creates authority because all those guys, if they see you in there answering everybody's question, then eventually they're gonna address a, a question directly to you. Basically, when they start directly ans asking you questions, you know you have arrived. You are the king of that mountain. And at that point, you can start seeding out like what you do, where to find you, where to get more information on you. And you can actually get people, offer them a free lead magnet. You know, you could say, hey, I've got this really cool thing on, you know, the, the top five things you need to know about sunscreen. And, you know, have them go to your site and download the PDF. Now you've got them in your database and so now you can market to them. You can't just openly spam those places. You have to like create the authority before you can start doing that stuff. If you just go in there and you say, hey guys, I got this free free uh, lead magnet or whatever, they're probably going to just kick you out and ban you. You have to go in, be useful, 
you know, have interaction in the directory, create value, and then you can do it. It's just like the old day forums. You know, forums were great when when people were going in and using them, uh, you know, honorably. It was, you know, at, at some point, everybody got the idea, oh, well, let's just create spam bots and just spam the forums. And then it kind of just, they're useless at this point. So create good value and uh, it, it will, you will get rewarded. You know, whenever, you're, whenever I've created good value on the internet, I've, I've always gotten people that opted in. I've got people that referred me. It's always been worth its weight in gold. Sometimes you don't see it because it, you know, when you're doing it, it's not instant payoff, but it does build long-term equity in your, your brand and your, your value. Okay. It's just like advertising. You know, a lot of times when, when people see an ad the first time, they don't buy. You know, it's like the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time they see it. It's like you've built up this value and this credibility. And now it's like, oh, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll buy that. I know that. They feel comfortable with it. When you show up on day one, you know, you're, you're a freshman. <laughs> All they want to do is put you in the trash can, right? <laughs> you got to get to that senior status and they're looking up to you and you know they want to be you yeah <clears throat> hey john Thank oh, you. So. hey randy hey how's everybody doing yeah i got i got a quick question for you i'm only focused on on a on a few things and webinar being one of them and i you know got that almost ready to go as far as getting it out to the world to get the first one done and I'm going to do three small, I say small, I should rephrase that, three low cost ones to, I think your philosophy is get them opening their wallet first. So mm -hmm. I did a, a real short, easy survey to kind of get some feedback on what people in my tribe would want to see in the form of a webinar as far as topics. And I whittled it down and, and combined it. And I've got you know, extrapolated three or four topics. So I've got all that done. And my question, based on some of the conversation that we, you were having this morning so far, the webinar funnel in terms of traffic, when you put the put the landing page out there from Kartra and you go live, when they go to that link, because it's a landing page, does does how does Google treat that? They they won't treat that like a website, right? because it's just a landing page? <clears throat> well, Google, every page to Google is just a web page. Okay. So Google is looking at every page as a piece of content that they want to index. It's like Google, think of them as the old school library. You've got a million books, you've got a million paragraphs, a million pages or, you know, 10 million pages and, and all of this stuff but if you need to find it, what do you go to? You go to the index cards, right? And you find, okay, well, it's in this book, it's on this page, that's on that shelf over there. And then you can go and you can get right to it. That's what Google is. That's the new library. And it's trying to index. It doesn't care if it's a book or page, a sentence, a paragraph, it's gonna index it all. And, and then, so, if, if you were to run a webinar, would you use would you use the Kartra and build a webinar funnel or a, a landing page and, and shoot that out? Would, is that what you would do? Yes, I absolutely would use Kartra. I've done it. I've done it both ways. I've done it with and without Kartra. Mm -hmm. And I only do it with Kartra now. I use Kartra to opt in. I use Zoom webinar to run my webinar. That's, I'm connected to that. When I create the Zoom webinar, when I schedule it and set it up, I click the button for do not require registration. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not making them register in Zoom. I'm making them register on my Kartra page. And then I get the Zoom link. When, it, when you put in there, do not require registration, it gives you the Zoom link to attend the webinar. So I take that, that link and I put that in my thank you page. I put it in my thank you follow-up emails. And I also put it in my sequence with every email going out, reminding them that the webinar is about to start. 
So usually you'll hit them with an email two days prior to the webinar, uh, a day before the webinar, the day of the webinar. And if you really want to get aggressive, you can do up to two more, like an hour before, and we're starting now. So it depends on how aggressive you want to be with your follow-up emails. But that's that's the way that I'm doing every one of them at this point. Now, let me let me tell you my experience with paid webinars versus free webinars. I did a webinar one time where I charged $7. And I followed Perry Belcher's model on this, but I didn't understand the model and I failed. And you gotta be careful with that. When you see somebody do something, you really need to understand the mechanics of why they're doing what they're doing. So I ignored all the rest. I just saw, okay, Perry did a $7 webinar. I'm gonna do one. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't understand his mechanics of why and what was making it work for him. And so what I did, I charged $7 for the webinar. I gave really good information in the webinar, but the webinar was strictly to sell a product. And what happened was I got a lot of people that were pissed off at me because I charged them to, basically I charged them for my marketing materials is how they saw it. So you want to be careful of that. Now, let me tell you how Perry did it and why it worked for him. Perry did the $7 webinar and he did it with William Shatner. And William Shatner was doing a charity fundraiser. And Perry said, look, it's $7. None of it's going to me. It's going to this foundation for these kids. And by the way, I'm going to give you some phenomenal information for seven bucks. And I'm going to show you in this webinar uh, what else we're doing. And if you want to get in on it, great. That's how he posed it. I, I guess I just didn't see that. And I tried it my way and it did not work. <laughs> so I, did, I just wanted to throw that out for you just because that, that's been my experience. I never did come back around and try actually what Perry had done to see if, if it would work for me. I just yeah so is the, is the is the lesson learned paid versus free are are you saying that that if for example the target audience that i'm i'm, I'm targeting they've already said they would want to see this now the question is would they open their purse a low amount of money yeah. to to actually get this information i and, think i think if it were if it were up to me i would do the free webinar and this model works really well. This has been used by all the marketers and I'll, and I'll tell you why it works. It's, it, you know, Frank Kern's been using it for years. He gives you about 90% of what you would pay for. If you were to buy his big box thing, it's $2,000, right? He gives you about 90% of what's in that box for free. He doesn't give you a couple of key pieces that is going to keep you from actually getting the result you want. He takes you 90% of the way, he takes you to the 10 yard line. And then he says, do you, want, do you want me to push you over the edge or do you want to do it on your own? So everybody wants, wants help. You know, they want it done for them. Nobody wants to be taken to the 10 yard line and then left. <laughs> so, so the reason I, you know, I was talking to someone and, and they were saying, and part of what you were saying was people want to, if you want to get someone to buy something larger, the, the bigger package, then, or the bigger offer, then get them to open their wallet a few times first. And I think you were, were preaching that, right? So is this counter to what you were saying from that perspective? Give it, give, give 90% of it away and keep the, that were those key things that would push them over because my coach, uh, sh I shared one product with her and she said, do not give all that away. <laughs> and, and so I was confused. I said, okay. Then I talked to Tammy and she was saying, well, John, John's always professed the lower, get them to open their purse first and then bring them to the bigger package. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's two, there's two trains of thought here. 
the the thing where the Frank Kern model, where you give them ninety percent and then you charge them the, the final ten percent, mm -hmm. that works up to about two thousand dollars. And if and only if you provide enough value and there's enough pain in the last ten percent of the solution. Mm -hmm. If you've got those key pieces to the puzzle, then that works really well. Now, if you're talking about, you know, a $25,000 item, that's a different story. That you're going to have to, you're going to have to stage them up for that. And if you look at Craig, Craig does this, Craig does the, the stair stepping. He does it masterfully. You know, he'll get you into a low cost room. And then he'll get you into the room, you know, and, and sometimes he'll put you in the room for free even. But a lot of people, you know, he'll charge $97 or $197, 297 He gives you two days of value and then invites you to the mastermind. You know, the mastermind's what, five grand, something like that. And then once you're in there, then he stages you up to his elite, which I think right. is... 15 or 25 grand, something right, like that. Right. Mm -hmm. so you have to have some stair steps to get to that level. Yeah. And this is not $2,000. This is not even close to $2,000. Okay. But yeah. She just didn't, she just thought, my coach just thought that was a, a solid package that people would want it. And it was really, to me, I, you know, it was probably the highest package aside from speaking that I, had put a product together and was trying and getting ready to sell. And I think it's coming in at like 497. Okay. Well, like, like Ryan Dice, if you look at Ryan Dice's method, he, he does what he calls splintering. He'll take the big box. Like, let's say you got the 497 package and he'll look at, okay, what are the pieces in there and what are the prices of the pieces? And then he'll splinter, he calls it splintering. He'll take a piece of it and he'll splinter it off into its own product. Okay. And he'll sell you that product first. And then he'll sell you the next sliver. And then the next sliver. And once he gets you about three in, then he upsells you to the whole package. He's like, okay, look guys, you're gonna want it all. You know, you've already got three in, you're gonna need it all. Let's, let's give you the bundle and save you some money here. But he's charging for those those slivers, right? Yes. Yeah. So and that's kind of like what I was thinking of doing. Yeah, he's charging for the slivers. I've seen the slivers start anywhere from seven bucks. Well, actually, even down to a dollar. I've seen a lot of these where they'll do a dollar trial. And where the dollar trials work really well is if there's a recurring model on the back end. Like they give you the dollar trial, they give you two weeks, like Kartra's perfect example. Right. They give you the dollar trial for two weeks. And then, you know, that gives you time to actually start using the product. And then they start charging you for it. Now, if you fall out, they'll say, oh, obviously you didn't try it yet. Let me give you some more time. So that's part of their funnel. So it, it really just kind of depends on what you know, what the package is, does it make sense in splintering it out? Would the people be most likely to buy a, a little piece or would they be most likely to buy the whole package? Like yeah. for me with, with the ACT program, you know, I could splinter the ACT program out, but I don't see the point in it because without the whole package, it's not gonna do you any good. And I sell it that way. I just, I don't sell it as a splinter. There's no there's no pre-offer. It's basically, I do the webinar, I build the value for $2,000 and then I sell it for $4.97. And I use another one of Perry's tactics to sell it that way. Uh, like if I'm doing it on stage, I'll build it up. It's a $2,000 package. And I say, that, and there, there are no discounts on it. It is, you're, you know, if you want it, you're gonna pay $2,000, $19.97. But here's what I'm going to do for you guys today. I'm going to break it into two payments. You pay $497 today, and you pay the second payment of $1,500 after you've made $100,000 with the program. Now, you might be thinking, well, how the hell am I going to measure that, right? I don't intend to. I don't care if they ever make the second payment. 
because I wanted to sell it for four ninety seven anyway. Got it. If somebody ever pays me that second fifteen hundred dollars, I'm going to do a backflip and video it so you guys can all watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but here's here's the other thing that I know about human psyche. People will self sabotage. Like if I told you that you had to make a second payment after you made a hundred grand, <laughs> logically you'd go, I would be so happy to give you that second payment, right? But the reality is when you got up to $99,000, you might pump the brakes because you're thinking, oh shit, if I make another, another thousand dollars, I'm going to have to give them 1500. Right. It makes no sense whatsoever, yeah, but it, you've made, you've made so much. Yeah. It doesn't it, make any sense, but it's true. It's, it's part of human nature. So I know that. And I, I remove that objection because that is, that creates an objection for why not to buy it. Right. Even though it's ridiculous, I know it does. So I eliminate the objection. I take them off the hook right there before I even sell them the 497 deal. And I say, here's what I'm going to do for you guys. Because you're here, you came out to hear me speak. When you make the $100,000, when you hit the mark, I'm going to allow you to trade the payment in for a testimonial. So you're never going to pay the second payment. All I want is a video testimonial. And we're clear. <laughs> Got it. And, and also, they still, and they paid you what you originally wanted in the house. Yeah. And yeah. also as a bonus, I'm going to enter you on our hundred K challenge. The first one of you guys to hit a hundred thousand is going to win my gold bar. And I, I buy these things on eBay. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but I've got a whole bunch of them. It's a four ounce silver bar. That's a replica of a hundred thousand dollar bill with Woodrow Wilson on it. And it's gold plated. So it literally looks like a gold bar of a hundred thousand dollar bill it's a very impressive prize the reality it's worth like four ounces of silver which is about 120 bucks and the gold plating which is you know probably another 50 so it's a you know it's a few hundred dollars at, at most i can pick them up on ebay i have a constant watch whenever one hits ebay i buy it just so just so i've got those for the challenges and you know Two, three hundred bucks, and I've got a prize that will incentivize a whole room full of people to buy my product and make money with it. That's a win win all the way around for everybody. Okay. Well, that so, makes sense. I just got to gotta put some more thought into it. Yeah. It's just yeah. a matter of, you know, you're building a mousetrap. What's going to put whiskers on the cheese? You got to get the whiskers off the cheese. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> hey John, how long is the uh, duration of those uh, uh, splinters? I mean, do, is there like a formula? Like, let's say you do a course, and it's uh, I don't know. I mean, when you give a course away, you don't know how quickly people are gonna go over it, right? Yeah. The idea is to not even let them go through the first course before you're selling them on the package. Like when Ryan does it, he has what, what his package is, it's called the uh, Digital Marketing Lab. And basically it's got access to all of his courses to do just about anything you want in digital marketing. They're all piece at a time, so you would have to decipher how to put them all together, which he, he doesn't really address that. <laughs> he's missing a big hole there but when you see it you know you want all this stuff right you might like right now you might want to know well, how do i run a facebook ad so that's one of his splinters he'll say hey for seven dollars i'll show you how to how we run our facebook ads how we get conversion on our facebook ads and then he'll say after you purchase that he'll say hey you know for seven more bucks i can show you how to do the same thing on twitter Twitter is really good. You know, if you think Facebook's good, look at Twitter. And then you buy that one. And then he does the same thing with LinkedIn. And then after you're about three deep, he says, look, guys, there's so much more here. And why do you keep buying at $7 at a time? Give me, you know, 49 bucks a month and you can have access to everything I ever make forever. You know, that's, that's his goal. 
You yes. know, I notice on PBS when they're doing a seminar, like, you know, like the little fellow that does mind power, they give you the seminar, but to sell it to you during the pledge break, they say now you'll get the complete package with all the, you know, the forms and paperwork and the, and the workbook. Sure. So the, that's true. They give you the course, but they. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of they, they take you 90% of the way. And, and then, you know, do you want to, do you want to fight the rest of the way or do you want me to pick you up and carry you over the finish line and give you a big kiss? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and everybody wants that. You know, every, it's like whenever you're doing something, especially if you're in unfamiliar territory, the idea that you just had somebody hold your hand and take you 90% of the way down the field, the value of the last 10% for that handhold goes, it escalates through the roof. Nobody wants to be left in unfamiliar territory. You know, it's, it's, it's like a fishing guide. You know, you go out with the guide and you catch fish and then you go out on your own and you don't catch any fish. What do you think you're gonna do next time? You're gonna, you're gonna go get the guide again, right? <laughs> and, and eventually, he could sell you a thing. He say, you know why I catch the fish, right? It's because I follow this formula. How would you like to have the formula? I'll be damned if you wouldn't buy the formula, right? You want that last 10% of that handhold. That's what you will pay for. That's what you'll pay the most for. That's what you'll be the happiest about paying for. It's John, let me, let me switch gears a quick, a quick minute real quick because you just made me think of something else. I like like most coaches, although I speak, but like most coaches, when I do a discovery session with someone, they, they call in, they make an appointment, they want to do this 30 minute discovery. I often will hear them say, and they're taking notes and, and they're getting the goods, so to speak. Uh -huh. And because it's just on a roll, sometimes when I hang up from that call, I'm questioning. Did I go too far? Did I give away too much? Because oftentimes, yeah. and, and so how do, how do you decide what's too much? That Okay, well, I, I mean, yeah, I, no, I, I get it. And I've, I've had that same challenge myself because, you know, I'll get somebody on a call and it's supposed to be a 15 minute call and we spend two hours and now I've told them everything they need to do and the, the call's over and I'm like, oh, what just happened there? <laughs> so I, I get it. So what you have to do is when you go into a call like that, it's, it's not just a call. It's a, you know, it's part of your, it's again, part of your mousetrap. If they paid for coaching, that's one thing, but like for, like for me, for instance, I'll give you a perfect example. I've got this on my homepage where you can get a free website analysis and a strategy session. And it's a 15 minute call. Basically what I do is I go through their website. I pull up, uh, I pull up SEM rush. I, I let them see behind the scenes, like what I look at. I say, okay, here's what you got. Here's what you're missing. I look through their site. And I'm looking for certain things that are broken. And all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to discover problems for them that they didn't know they had. And then what I do is I tell them, I say, now, now that you know what, what areas need to be worked on, you can go back to your webmaster and just have them fix it. And nine out of 10 times, they don't have a webmaster. They don't know how to do it themselves. And they just say, well, could you do that for me? And, and that's, that's how I do it. So I'm not telling them how to do it. I'm telling them what needs to be done. So here's my follow-up question of that. When, once you get to that point in the conversation, do you get them right then while you got them? Yeah, absolutely. You, you sign them up right then. You don't let them think about it or, or walk I, away or anything like that. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. It's right there. I say, and usually it's a like nine out of 10 websites that I look at are a disaster. They would never convert. They're not going to work. They're not responsive. They're not up to, to, to today's standards. So my recommendation to them is they get a modern website built that looks like it's not from 1980. And, you know, it's secure. It's on a fast host. I give them a criteria, almost like a bullet list of here's what you need. Go back to your webmaster and see what he's going to charge you to do it. And even if they have a webmaster, now all of a sudden they don't have confidence in them because they haven't done this for them and they didn't even tell them it was broken. So I've just built a lot of credibility in myself just by telling them what's wrong. And at that point, they ask me and I can give them a number right off the top of my head of what it costs to build a site like that. Because, you know, it's I, I've done thousands of them. I know exactly what it costs. I know what my guys, you know, what my cost is going to be and all of that. So I typically pick up right there. I pick up a hosting client because I say if we build the sites, we only build sites on, on our own servers because it's a can of worms when we get into other people's systems. So now I've got a hosting customer forever and we've got a web development project on the table that minimal effort for me, I pass it over to my team, they knock it out in a week or two. And now I've got a hosting customer that's gonna pay me for life and look to me for recommendations anytime they need anything. I've positioned myself that I'm the go-to guy, whatever they need, they're gonna ask. And if I don't supply it, I'm going to know somebody that does that's going to give me a commission. So I have okay. a I have a massive lifetime value of customers. Like I, I've got web hosting customers from 1995 that are, you know, I built their sites in 95 and they're still coming to me for everything they need. I've made so much money off each one of them, it, you know, just by providing what they need or telling them, cutting the learning curve out for them. Yeah, so. I think you saved me some some time because I let a customer, a potential customer, go last week and to think about, and she had already expressed how much I had helped her in that discovery session. Yeah. And, yeah. and like you said, I should have closed the deal right then. Yeah. And, and I mean, you guys know me. I'm very soft about it. I don't hard sell anybody. Right. It's, right. You know, it is, it just, yeah. it's just not me. Yeah, I'm just looking for my, the mistakes that I can clean up. Okay, well, thank but you. Look at, look at your process and, and just know that every time you're having a conversation, you need to go into it with an end in mind, what you want out of it. And, and for me, it's just, I'm going to spend 15 minutes with this person and I'm going to just basically, I'm just there to take a look at what they've got, make recommendations. And if they would like me to fix it for them, the offer is there. That's my call to action. And, and nine out of 10 times, or probably more like 99 out of 100 times, I don't have to even throw the call to action out. They throw it at me. Can you fix that for me? How much would it cost to have you just do it? If my question would just be worded a little differently. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have an opportunity to clean, to save one, or not to save one, but to do do one right this afternoon so thank that you awesome awesome <laughs> good stuff <laughs> all right randy, randy i got a term for you you're a coach you, you might close them and say look uh, i'm glad you found that valuable uh how about getting on the field you know like a football player you know why don't we suit up and get on yeah. the field for 497 or else I'm going to hurt your dog. <laughs> there's a there's a couple of good books out there. I'm not a book reader myself, so I haven't read them myself. But I know there's a couple of really good books out there, and it's called Consultative Selling. So if you're posed as a consultant, you are really set up as the ideal salesperson, like the wolf in sheep's clothing. Because you're there to consult, you're there to help them, you're there to point out their weaknesses and show them how to turn them into strengths. And they're also going to look to you for the advice of how do I do that? Where do I go? What do I buy? So you become a consultative salesperson 
And like I said, I've never read the book, but I, I believe that I probably do exactly what's in the book just by, just by my nature. And I've had a lot of people that have read that book and tell me, you got to read this. You got to read this. I'm like, why do I need to read it? I probably already do it just naturally. Yeah, if you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. I am. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of these books they actually wrote about me. <laughs> it cracks me up. I've, I, you know, I'm really, I'm seriously not a book reader. I've, I've, it would frighten you to know how many books I've read. <laughs> so like one. <laughs> Even in school, I never read books in school. I went entirely through high school without reading a book. Swear to God, this is a true story. I never read a book all the way through high school. Not that I couldn't read. I can read fine. But for me to sit down and read a book just was not going to happen. Boring, huh? I, I sk I'm a skimmer. Get to the important stuff and move on. I didn't the words even. of Rodney Dangerfield. I can go in and watch the movie. In two and a half hours, I'm done. I had some popcorn. <laughs> I didn't even skim. I mean, talk about lazy. I wouldn't even skim the damn thing. I knew damn well that I could listen to that teacher and he was going to tell me everything that was important and is going to be on that test. It's going to come right off his lips. And he's, and going, to remind, he's going to remind you to, that this is what's important. <laughs> yeah. And, I, you know, and all the other kids, they're all clowning around. And, you know, I, I paid attention when he was talking. They were talking when they should have been listening. So I, I took that focused little piece of time that was important and I paid attention. And then while they were all spending hours and hours studying at home, I was out playing. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, you know, I, I'm probably an odd duck, but. That's just my whole deal with books. <laughs> Not a big book reader. <laughs> but it was funny. I was in some seminar and they wanted us to read a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Which, you know, it's just a little book. You could read it in, you know, a few minutes or whatever. And I didn't read the book, but Barb read it. And she told me what was in it. And she says, was this thing written about you? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you don't need to read that. <laughs> pretty, pretty cool stuff. Oh, hey, hey, John, I was, uh, uh, I was just wondering if you had heard about what uh, Carter is doing with the calendar uh, functionality. I got an email from them. I have. I've heard from a couple of people that are still using it that they've fixed a lot of the stuff and that it's actually working really well for them. I saw it, I saw it a few minutes ago. It, 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 at first, when you look at it, it looks weird. And then you figure it out. OK, this is what they're seeing. And they just really just it, it has a bar up top. It You can see as they go in and hit a date, it goes to the next section. It goes in. It's, it's pretty slick so far. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's in your time zone too, so that's that's good. Yeah, that was like one of the big things for me. That just really threw me for a loop when I was having to deal with Eastern time and twenty-four hour time. BMT, <laughs> yeah, it was coming up on your your calendar. It would come up uh, three hours different than what it is. Google Calendar at least converted it, but then yeah. you had to get everything on Google Calendar. And I had three calendars. Now I'm down to two. I got to get to just Google. <laughs> But at least it's fixed. Yeah, yeah. So from what I understand, the uh, the calendar in Kartra is, I don't know if it's 100% fixed, but it's way better than it was. So they, they did some serious work on it. They listened to all of us screaming about it and, you know, leaving them for other calendars. And, you know, it's like anything else. Uh, Kartra is a, that's a monster development piece that they've created. And and it's awesome. I mean, 90% of it is phenomenal. And they're working on the other 10. So, you know, we just got to kind of be patient. And there's a couple of things that still drive me crazy. They have a bug that I've told them about now for a year. And I know it's a simple bug. It's a simple fix. And apparently they've got so many other things they haven't got to it yet. And it's when your customer 
when their credit card expires and they go in and they update it, the sequence that says your credit card is expired continues to run. So even though they have updated their card and the card's running, they're still getting this error message from the Kartra system. And I told them right where it was. I'm like, look, you guys have a sequence and you're missing an automation to remove the sequence when an action is taken. I told them exactly what it was and and probably where it is, and they still haven't fixed it. So, I mean, little stuff like that. But all in all, I wouldn't give up Cal. I wouldn't give up Carter for anything. There's no system that I would move to. You know, I am really that happy with what you know the parts of Carter that work. They work awesome. And they've uh, made listen, I, I aspire to have a business where 90% of it is working and I got to work on 10%. That's my goal in life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know, they're, it's awesome what they've done. They actually did what Infusionsoft wanted to do. Infusionsoft wanted an easy platform and they never got there. <laughs> and now I think they've broken the company apart and they've even called it something different because they had such, they'd created such a horrible name for themselves. So I, I applaud them in that. And it's been a multi-generation. Kartra came out of Kajabi. You know, it was the same guys that developed Kajabi. They sold Kajabi off and they moved to develop something on top of what they had already learned. And that was Kartra. And, you know, and Andy Jenkins was, I think he was like, I don't know if he was like the developer, but he was kind of the brainchild behind it. He passed away here a couple of years ago. And now Mike Phil yeah, Same. It's been like a year or so he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Phil Same kind of took the reins. Him and Mike had worked on a lot of stuff over the years. And Mike took, I don't know if he took the same developers and developed Groovecart. But from what I've heard, Groove, Groovecart has a lot of bugs and it's a very early development thing. And Mike has basically been giving it away, like giving lifetime accounts away in hopes to build a big enough audience to probably save that. Sh that I don't, I don't want to call it a sinking ship, but that sinking ship. <laughs> and you're on a yacht. <laughs> Yeah. So, but anyway, I, I did not make the move to Groove Cart. It's like I'm perfectly happy with Kartra, and there's nothing gonna, nothing short of a disaster gonna get me to move off of there. Hey John, one, one, today I'm on a roll. One final question. You said in Zoom where the webinar uh, platform's at, you in Kartra, you send them back to the thank you page. How do you? Because I have it connected, I'm looking here and I have a, a registration link, but they pay, they get a thank you page. But I, I was thinking that Zoom, when Zoom registers them, they send them the email with the confirmation. Yeah, I don't use their, I don't use the Zoom system for that. Okay. I bypass is, that all together. Is there a negative to that? Or can you use the Kartra as well? There, the only negative to that is you have to set it up in Kartra where Zoom handles it all automatically. You could connect uh, Zapier to take the I do have Zap That's how I connect it through Zapier. If, if you're doing that, then you're accomplishing the same thing and you're just letting Zoom do the follow up for you. There's no problem with that. Okay. I didn't know if I'd need to change that. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm just. I don't know if I'm, yeah, I'm probably just too lazy to connect Zapier and figure out how to make it do its thing. Okay. And because I can still take that link, it shows the Kartra link in Zoom. I can still take that and put it in a, a follow up email. Yeah. If I mm -hmm. wanted to, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can, as long as you get the data into Kartra and they're tagged for the webinar so you can identify yeah, they them. They are. They are. Yeah. As long as you've got that, you can send a, you know, a manual broadcast out to them anytime you want. Okay. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just sending the manual broadcasts out to them instead of having, uh, you know, Zoom do it automatically. 
Hey, John, I have a question about Quartro. Uh, you know, I signed on to it as probably as soon as you mentioned it, because uh, I'm an ardent disciple of yours. Um, but it's been five months. I haven't used it at all. I'm still in the world of content and creating the web. Um, and I just, I stopped it or I put it on rest. Is there a way to approach them for a credit? I mean, is there a way they can tell that this guy didn't use the account at all? Give the cat. No, they really don't do that. There's no retroactive on that. You can put the account on hold. I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something to hold your data. That's what I did. Keep it alive. That's about the only thing that you can really do there. Alrighty. And then and you I just you know, come back. Uh, Kartra, I was out for, gosh, almost four or five months. And then basically they sent me an email one day saying, uh, you can sign up and get uh, for six months and get three months free. So I did. Uh, it was a hell of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Most one that's what I about the time that John was doing his that's what John was when you did the class on it because the okay. reason I quit was I, I I I didn't have time to learn it yeah and figure it out and the information they gave to learn it just confused the crap out of me John <laughs> you created that whole thing in, inside the act program that was made it so simple for us to understand that was why I went back to him like you know what I mean you I literally in one day went through and set up using what you did yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Through one day of watching that and, and I, I transferred my membership over from my personal website using wishlist mm -hmm. that yeah. I've used wishlist and optimized press to build that twice. And the, the slowest amount of time or the other, the shortest amount of time it took to build that using tools I knew was like three days <laughs> on Kartra. I built it. I built the whole thing in my membership site in an afternoon. Yeah, like, yeah, I had what, my one program in an afternoon and I just basically emailed everybody. It's moving over here. And yeah. then I changed the login. Um, like basically if you go to my one site and you hit that, well, I log in, you, I just moved the login to over to my, my other page. That's all. So yeah, well, Craig, he it was had... so easy to set up this time because John, yeah. you simplified it. Yeah. Now there's I'm... stuff I'm still learning and can't figure out, but that's not like, I don't need to know it to, in order to make money. I, it's, it's, it's working. I'll, I'll learn it in time. If I get frustrated, I call you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Kartra has awesome training videos. A lot of what I know about it, I learned from their training videos, but they're, they're just little segments that's like, this is how this works, but it doesn't give you the context of how to put it all together. Mm. And that's what I did. I just filled that hole with my training. Like, here's how you set up Kartra. Here's, here's how you make it make money for you. Randy, I, by the way, Randy, uh, your message is up there. I just checked. You're not into my virtual thing. So text me later and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how to get in there. Okay. And I sent you my info. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody Tim, else? Here? Tim, I'm sorry, John, this is an off subject, but uh, Woody wanted to, Tim, put your class in the, the link in the chat because Woody wanted to enroll too in the December 12th class that you're giving. Now, I learned from the experts like John and Craig and Frank Kern, James Malinchek. I do not sell you a ticket to my one class. You buy a membership, the class is included. Okay, well, you know what I mean, Tim. For life. You buy a membership, one-time fee, you're, it, it's included for life. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> and it's a hard price to swallow. It's only 20 bucks. It, it said... It, <laughs> And send me yourself so I can text you. I don't know if I have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So for all of you guys that, that came on later, uh, did you recognize where I am today? I know. On the boat. I can tell you're on the boat. Yeah, I'm. Woohoo! You're rocking. That's how we know you're rocking. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't side. tell you were on the boat at all there, John. No, no, you can't. Tour, we'll, we'll... tour, tour. <laughs> what is the name of your boat? I don't know how, how good you can see that, but that's yeah, it's good. Of, we saw it. Yeah. Kind of a turn around there. I was going to give you a walkthrough, but I when I got on here, I was up top working with some guys putting some new electronics on, and I haven't gone through and turned all the lights on yet. So take me 10 minutes to go turn all the lights on in this thing. You look like you've gotten a lot of sun. 
Yeah. Very healthy. Very healthy. And, and, you're, sm- and you're smiling a lot. I just, um, I just want to know if we're going on a three hour tour anytime soon. <laughs> you just got to get yourself out to California. I'll take you anytime you want. As long as it's not the Ooh. SS Minnow. Yeah, as long as it's not named the SS Minnow, I'll take the three hour tour. Well, you know, last, last Friday we did our first mastermind on the boat. Cool. Wow. And, uh, yeah, Gregory was on and uh, Jay was on. And uh, I, I just basically opened it up to apprentices. So we oh. had uh, we had uh, Jim down. He drove down from Reno. And, and yeah, it was, it was an awesome time. The How many in- people can fit on the boat? Yeah, boats in Long Beach at uh, Shoreline Marina. Oh, okay. How, how many people? Time. How many people does it uh, fit comfortably? Uh, oh well, it's it sleeps seven. It's got seven bunks. There's three bedrooms. Uh, like sitting in here, there's probably room in the salon to sit. I don't know, eight people. Wow! Nice. That eight people around the around the big table here. So when COVID is over, maybe this summer we can come down. Uh, There's no COVID on the boat. (laughs) (laughs) No COVID in the marina. (laughs) Uh, Do be advised that if you you enter the state of California, you'll be quarantined for 14 days aboard the Limbo Limbo Land. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Limbo Land. That's the name of the boat. (laughs) Yep. Yep. The boat was originally named Sea Snake. And I'm not a big snake fan myself, and no, neither was Barb. So I was thinking, like, name the boat the Apprentice, or, or the you know the boardroom, or you know something cool. Shark like Tank, the, or the, the you know the Dominator. Hey! Dominator. I, I gave Barb a, a, an approved list to pick from. I gave her like a dozen choices, and she chose Limbo Land. Limbo Land is cool. Limbo Land rocks, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we are on the on the like US Disneyland. Yeah. Limbo Land. That's what we call our house too. We we refer to our house as Limbo Land too. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, the boat is Limbo Land one and the house is Limbo Land two. I'm just get clarifying here. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> the house used to be number one, but now the house is number two. <laughs> Limbo Land and Limbo World. I'm <laughs> It's limbo land north and limbo land south or, or limbo yacht John, I, I want... oh limbo land limbo land that's where i live in, in the land of limbo <laughs> john i wanted to ask you a question about my upcoming tv ad okay um you know i just joined a great speakers course and this you know i had to you know there's so many ways to do this thing um my you know it's only 30 seconds in that 30 seconds i can get about 20 photographs in you know with writing over each one so i could have a you know i could have a picture of randy Powell, and on over it there could be the print of like you know you want to i i sell houses to champions you know something like that uh, you could do a bunch of those, and then at the end, you leave a couple seconds about telling you to go to the site. But now that I'm in the speaker's course, this person insists, you know what, Woody, the way you are as a person, the way you are as a personality, you should be the only one there, maybe through a show, a couple of pictures, but basically, you know, make the offer. You know, qualify who I am. I am Woody Blagman. I'm the guy that brought a big a little company to LA and now it's world renowned selling billions of real estate. And I'm making my service available to you. You know, that's about 30 seconds right there. Yeah, uh, I, I think that there's probably definitely some uh, some merit to that. For sure. Obviously, you want to test stuff. If you're going to do photos i wouldn't do that many i wouldn't like have them going high speed i would slow it down a little bit especially text if you're going to have text coming in and out you want to have plenty of time for them to actually get it so make it short simple yeah it cost an extra 500 to put the the uh the over voice on it or whatever you call it um the voiceover 
Yeah, the voice over. <laughs> Not the over voice. But anyway, um, a lot of people seem to think that that, you know, because I go, look, I only need a couple of deals a year. Uh, well, more than that, to make it all pay for itself, to make me a profit. Sure. So I'm not going crazy anymore with like, oh my God, it's got to be the best ad on TV. Just a couple of lunatics like me that would like a me, you know, is all that it takes. You know, I'm not going to get everyone. And I'm also not going to go up against the big companies. I'm going to say I'm a boutique company. I only have a couple of people I take care of. And I would love to show you what world-class service looks like and get you, and then uh, John Limbaugh, get you the most money you can. That's my job. Yeah. Buy or sell. Do you like that more than a artsy? I, I, I like the straight. I like the straight approach for sure. I think that's. I think there's some merit to that, and especially if if you're actually in the video, I think there's some merit to that. What I told Tammy the other day, we were talking about it, like you know what angles to take and all that. And what I had told her was to see if she can find some competitors that are running TV ads and take a look at what they're doing so you know what you're up against and you'll know what's working. Because if they're running the ads and they've been running them for any length of time, that tells you that they're working. Yeah, I've, I've done that. And there were two other competitors. One guy is boring as hell. Uh, but the other guy has been on forever, for years. Well, and even if they're boring, the boring, I wouldn't, I wouldn't need really don't even discount the boring. Through. Yeah, don't discount that. What I would look at is what is his message? Yeah. What, what is the exact words that he's saying? And then if you say the same words and you're not boring, you're going to have a leg up. Well, your philosophy is always, as I understand it, one that attracts the art. You know, you sell them the art, and those two ads have absolutely no art. Yeah, because, I mean, you guys have probably heard everything that I've ever said, or anything I've ever said to you, you've probably heard it from other people. You may it may have gone in one ear and out the other, just because of my delivery on it. I, I've had a lot of people that when I tell them something, they say they've heard it before, but they got it now, for some reason, for whatever reason. So your delivery, you could be saying the same thing, but your delivery could hit home with, with a lot of people. A lot of people could resonate with you. So, but the thing is, you got to figure out what the right thing to say is. What is the words? What's the message? Right. So if you don't have to recreate the wheel, let's go look at what wheel is rolling nicely down the road and just improve upon it. That, that would be my recommendation. Got it. And I think you'll do well with that. Because I think, I know there are people that will resonate with you. I, I know it. You know, and I'm ready to get on Tim Gillette's show, uh, <laughs> you know, and go on a rant about <clears throat> those investor guys, you know, they're out to kill you. Uh, so, you know, I've got a couple of really good messages and I'm going to make them fun so I don't look like an old man on a rant with a hole in his neck. <laughs> awesome but, uh, yeah that's what i would do if i were you all righty uh being an old man on a rant with a hole in your neck is is all the charm that's yeah, that's the whole that, that, off, baby yeah that could be the whole endearment right there that's the caricature <clears throat> yeah all right guys well i'm gonna go ahead and wrap her up here and uh We'll be Sail back. The seven seas in limbo land. That's right. I think we got one more week here before uh, before Thanksgiving, or is, is Thanksgiving 
No, Thanksgiving's not next week. Is Thanksgiving it? is next week, John. Next week, Johnny B. There All right. right. Well, that's John, what I get. Can you hear me? That's what I get when I'm down here on the boat. So, hey, John, Ronald, John, Ronald. can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I just shot you an email uh, for an ad that I wanted to run in a publication. I don't know if you have time to uh, throw it out there to get feedback or not. So it's up to you. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I don't have my email on here on the phone. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> but I will take a peek at it when I get home and then I'll email you back. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah. Because I have to turn it in today. Okay. Sounds okay. like a winner. John, I emailed you uh, about Monday. Let me know what time, please. Okay. We'll Thank do. You. In fact, actually, Gregor, you can just go on and schedule it. Just pick uh, pick one of the open slots on Monday. Okay. I got to go find the, uh, the, the schedule link. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Gill Gilligan didn't have email either. <laughs> um, not for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> John, on, on who your... said that? I'm sorry, I didn't see who said that. <laughs> I did, Tom. <laughs> Tom. Hey, John, on your on your uh, on your workshop on the boat, uh, did anyone get nauseous? Throw up? No, no. We've got stabilizers on here, so it really doesn't uh, it doesn't rock side to side like most boats. Yeah. It, it, I was there. It was all good, guys. It was really all good. We went up to, we went down and saw Donald Trump's uh, property. We waved at the flag, and then we came back, to, uh, back to, uh, uh, back to Long Beach. Nice. It was pretty smooth sailing. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I will. Uh, I'll let you guys know. Maybe we'll push next week's call up to Wednesday because I don't think anybody wants to be on here on Thanksgiving. So, we'll uh, we'll probably push it up to Wednesday and and do that sounds good to me all right well have a have a great rest of the week and if i don't see you next week happy thanksgiving to everybody and uh that's that's about it all right captain captain one last thing did you talk about black friday because i missed the beginning and i want to go back and watch it oh okay no actually we didn't really hit much black friday today we did that last week i think the last couple of weeks actually oh, we have okay gone. yeah We've i didn't know if you had black any friday. i missed any nuggets because i was on last two weeks i just had a crazy morning so i got on a little late no, I, I i actually opened up this morning asking if anybody needed uh, assistance with any black friday deals and uh, and we just kind of got on to other stuff so okay <laughs> all right all right. Thank you, John. All right, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right. Have a great week. Thank you. I'll be well. Gobble, gobble. <laughs>